Welcome to the Weave Along 2020 here at Shack Spindle Company, celebrating spinning and weaving week. I'm really excited to have the opportunity to weave along with you. We're weaving a pillow, demonstrating five different techniques. Today we're on day four. Day four happens to be one of my favorites. It's plain weave with embroidery. I will be using this very dark raspberry color for the plain weave. It's a worsted weight plied yarn. It's going to go very, very quickly with the weaving. And then we get to my favorite and most enjoyable part, which is the embroidery. I used the rest of the warp from Rocky Mountain Meadows, which was our exclusive colorway for this spinning and weaving week, to do the embroidery on the pillow that you're going to be weaving along with me. So I hope you've got your yarn and you're ready to weave. We're going to start the same way that we would start always. Edge thread is up, so I'm going to go over that thread into the same shed. So these two yarns are in that same shed together. Snug it up just a bit and beat. Now, one of the things that you're going to notice is one of the same things that I noticed on the pillow that I wove as the sample. And that is, I'm not seeing any definition between the color background section that I chose for the warp floats and the plain weave. And that was one of the reasons that I made a decision to do embroidery between these two sections. So after I've woven a portion, I'm going to come back and show you a very easy embroidery stitch to do between these two sections. Now that I've completed three and three quarter inches of plain weave, we're going to do the embroidery. I also want to note using the heavier weft thread with a little bit lighter warp thread helps those colors really show up. And I did this, if you remember at the beginning, by after I was direct peg warping, I tried to pull from each slot and move it into each hole colors where I saw colors that were together. A lot of this has to do with the length of the space dyed yarn you have. So you may not have a pattern that looks like this, but our yarn warped up at 56 inches in the warp on this rigid heddle loom does tend to have these really nice stripes. I'm going to use that same yarn, the Rocky Mountain Meadows, which was our custom colorway coming from Sweet Georgia. I'm going to use that for the embroidery. So I also did take the liberty of picking a particular section of yarn. I picked a section of yarn that had less of this raspberry color in it so that I'd have a little bit more definition to the stitches. Now we're going to get started with the embroidery. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to drop the thread down over here at the right. I can see this line where I stopped my warp floats. I'm going to go in from underneath and come up right at the end of that warp float. I'm going to be working this pattern from right to left. So I come up and I'm going to go diagonally towards the salvage and up. So right now what I'm doing is I'm going to be making my accents. Now I'm going to come back down towards where my warp float material ended, pull it through, and just make that X. It's very much like a cross stitch embroidery pattern. So now I'm going to go diagonally down And I'm going to go in exactly where I came out with the bottom of that cross. Now I'm going to come back across up where I had 
come from before, that same little X, and back down into the fabric. So now I'm going to go again, diagonally. And this will get much faster as you move along. But we're still going to have that really nice stitch definition, especially because of the content of the fiber. So this fiber that I'm working with that I used in the warp is wool and silk, and it is what adds that sheen. And one of the things that I'm not doing, and this might bother a lot of you, is I'm not really counting. I don't really want this pillow to look highly uniform or like something that could have been produced in a factory. One of the best things about handmade objects is that many different pieces of equipment in a factory could not duplicate what we do with our hands. And sometimes I really like that to show through. So we're going to continue across, and then I'm going to show you how to add another element into the actual fabric. One of the things that you'll notice as well that I did beat this very nice and firmly, that will allow the fabric to hold up under the embroidery. Now that we've completed the X's that separate our pickup from our plain weave, we're going to be doing a satin stitch embroidery in a shape. So in order to do that, I picked another section of the Rocky Mountain Meadow yarn, mostly with the purples, blues, and greens, so that it'll pop. I have my darning needle, a piece of chalk, and a template for the shape that I'd like to make. So I chose a diamond shape and I'm just going to center it and use the chalk on the fabric. To create my shape. Now I can see where I want to stitch inside of that shape. And the great thing about chalk is it just rubs off after you're finished. So I'll thread my needle I'm going to start from the back bring the yarn up And I'm going to make a very small stitch for the first point in my triangle. Now I'm also going to rotate that color until it's where I want. So now I'm going to be slowly increasing the length of each stitch. And I'm going in as close to the last stitch as possible. On some of these stitches, you might find that you are actually doing it twice. The diameter of the yarn that we're using for this technique, if you want it very, very close, it will have a little bit more of a poofy effect and much more full coverage. So as you can see, I'm slightly increasing the size as I go. And now I'm noticing that this last stitch looks like it's a little bit tighter than the stitch before it. So I'm just going to tighten up the stitch before it by pulling 
on that next stitch. So the diameter of the yarn being a little finer than the yarn that we use to weave with, you might have to make a couple extra stitches to kind of fill in a little bit of the gap. One of the things that's very nice about embroidering while it's on the loom is you have that added tension to really help you out. And you have the, the nice clear lines of the warp to help to guide you to keep your pattern straight. I'm really happy that you could join us. Tomorrow we will be doing day five, where we're going to do some exploration in weft floats. So can't wait to see you back tomorrow.